Mr. J. Krishnamurti, 16th of April, 1969, second meeting with young people in Paris. Shall I start or will you start? I think it's better that you start. Get in afterwards. I should think it must be a great concern, especially when one is very young, seeing what the world is, confused, wars, bureaucratic governments, and so much confusion, misery, What is the right thing to do among all this mess? What should one do? How should one act, behave? Marriage, no marriage, girlfriend, boyfriend, set up a family, enter a bureaucratic world, join the army or not the army, which profession, profession to take, what kind of job, whether to be completely materialistic or little bit spiritual and mostly materialistic or very spiritual and very little materialistic. It must be a tremendous problem for the old, it's more or less settled, they're finished, they're on their way out and for the young it must be a really agonizing problem if they're at all serious. So would you like to discuss that? Mm. Yes. Mr. Krishnamurti, do you understand my bad English? Yes, sir. Uh, speak in French, it doesn't matter. Oui, oui. What I've remarked is very important, is that it's always very dangerous to delegate the moindre of his powers. We've already done very little, to give Le pouvoir à quelqu'un d'agir pour vous ou de parler pour vous est très dangereux. Oui. Et autre question, euh, ce que vous avez dit dimanche dernier sur ma peur était très intéressant. Quelle est l'origine quelle est l'origine de la peur? Est-ce que c'est la We'll go into that, sir. May we go on tomorrow evening into that? Tomorrow. Tomorrow evening I'm going to talk, we'll go into that because we must continue with the question of fear tomorrow afternoon. If we could continue with what you started today, sir. Could we go on with what we started today? Yes. Personally, I had no choice in the matter. I've always done what I think is the right thing to do, which is what I'm doing now. There's been no question of family, money, wanting to be famous, popular, popular, right or not right, speak. Or, I just did what I want to do. And it hasn't become a profession, because I've also stopped talking to test for myself whether I relied on talking, having an audience in front of me. I lived a great deal alone, wandered about in the mountains by myself. I played all kinds of diet tricks on dietary. So seeing all that, I wonder what you're all going to do 
what one does in life. How do we approach this problem? Fragmentarily? Or take the whole content of life, which is one has to earn a livelihood, one may have or may not have family, there is the question of sex, one has to have money, one has to live in a place, have a house or a room with a bath or no bath, How do we approach this, this thing as a whole, or do you want to approach it fragmentarily? <clears throat> Job first and everything else afterwards, or family first and everything else separate? Or is it a thing to be approached all wrong, you know what I mean? Totally. I think we're obliged to approach it totally. Big one, sir? I think we're obliged to approach it totally. I wonder if we do see the thing totally. That is, I mean, I mean, there is, do we see it fragmentarily or totally? And is it possible to see totally when one is young? Totally means, you know what I mean? There's the whole question of religion, the religious feeling, the, the feeling of dedication to some, something real, not just phony invention of a church or a priest, something for oneself which is true for, if it is true for me, it is true for everybody else. And there's the question of sex. What, how, what importance has it in life? Little or much, or is the only thing that matters? Then there's the question of love. Death. There is this immense map of life. Do I, will I take one part of that map and say, well, I'm going to devote my life, whether it's science, uh, mathematics, archaeology, or, his, or uh, theoretical physics, physics. Or do you want to take the whole map of this life and say, well, if, if I can understand the whole of it, then if I do take a little part, it's all right. It'll, the, the little is contained in the whole. I should think this must be a tremendous thing, tremendous problem. So, how do you, from that question arises, how can one see the whole of it? Not job, uh, love, separately, you know, but a total perspective of this thing. And I think if one could see this whole thing prospectively, then whatever we do will be right. Now it's a point question of harmony. No, sir, it isn't harmony. Look, sir. Beaucoup de gens s'identifient à 
qui euh, leur spécialise là-dessus. Que ça les empêche de voir le truc. No, no, you and I, sir, you and I, for let's forget what people say. I mean, if I was 30, 20, that would be my problem. Or even 40. That would be my problem. To become a communist? No, I wouldn't do that because I see the game of it. I see the fallacy of it, or to become a religious, religious uh, Catholic or Protestant or a social worker or Peace Corps <laughs> or enter a particular job. And inwardly, there is the problem of sex, problem of living with oneself peacefully, uh, the question of what love is, whether one can love, the loneliness, the misery, all that going on, battling inside one. And there is the environment which says, do this, don't do that, this is right, this is wrong, you follow? Can I see this whole thing as a map? And then I, from the map, I know which road to take, which, where the rivers are, where the towns are, where all the rest of it. How to walk, where to climb, where to be, be quiet, look in the forest, you know, I will know. Can I, can we look at this whole complex thing called life that way. And if we can't, then mere choosing a fragment is most disastrous. It's like a scientist who is only concerned with, with a particular little field or an engineer, you know. So can we go into this? Not you, madam. Can we go into this? So the first question I would ask is, how can I not only see this whole thing visually, but also have a feeling for this whole map? Because the feeling matters much more than the, than the intellectual perception of it, because the feelings are going to dictate my life whether reasonable, unreasonable, they are the power, the drive, the energy. <clears throat> so I think we are too anxious Come on. to find out, we are too anxious to find out the solution of all the little details, the, the, the little pro problems, if you can't have this, this look at the, the whole, this global kind of approaching the matter, we are too after the response of questions. You mean there are two immediate problems to be solved? Yes, sir, I think. And so we can't see the whole, of, the whole design of this existence, is that it? Yes, I think that is pretend. There's immediate problems of livelihood, immediate problems of the urges of biological urges of sex, and immediate problem of food. Is that what is preventing us? Which prevents, which stops us from looking at this whole design, this whole contour of this life? Is that so? Is that actually so? Maybe 
not uh, the question of food for in this country is not so so difficult, but we are wanting for ourselves a kind of security we are seeking all that's it that's it. is that the one thing that's so important security that you want to neglect the rest that you don't that prevents you from seeing the rest bread and butter security job which is actually prevent each one of us seeing this whole map. I wonder if it is so. No, I don't think so, sir. I think security is the primary thing that's driving us. I think we don't like suffering. We don't like suffering. We don't like insecurity. What? We don't like insecurity. Inter? Insecurity. He says we don't want to be insecure. Insecure. Is that, is that the thing? Please listen to my question. Is that the thing, insecurity, preventing you from seeing the whole... La sécurité. Can't I? Though I may want security, is that preventing me from seeing the whole map of life? Could be. But Could be. is it? <laughs> Because I, if I was, if that was my problem, I want to find an answer, not could be, maybe, should be. I said, what am I to do in this world? I have no time to sit down and say, could be, maybe, should, whatever might be. I say, here is the question. What am I to do? C'est la peur de l'inconnu, la sécurité. Comment? C'est la peur de l'inconnu, la sécurité. The pearl, the? L'inconnu. On se sent. Uh, no, mon cher. No, you're, I'm afraid we are not understanding each other. Is it a particular fear that prevents the perception of the whole? Because I must have food, clothes, and shelter. I must have it. Hmm? And is that the thing that's preventing me from seeing this, the whole existence of life in which I have to live and act? Why should I choose one segment of it? Like I must have security. No, mon cher. No, sir, do, I'm afraid we are not understanding each other. Oui, la même chose, voilà. Peut-on répéter en français cette question We are all made in individuals. Hein? We are all made in individuals. And uh, we are all referring, referring all things to ourselves. And um, because we are doing this, we can't see. No. Don't you want to find out what to do? Yes. Huh? Yes. All right. If you want to find out what to do in this world, how do you begin? Listen, there is security. Insecurity. There is this f question of family, sex, love. There is the re whole religious question, which you may say that's nonsense, but it is there. You can't say it is nonsense. It's there. There is a question of death. What to do? say, go and kill for the country. You follow, so that the world is so confused. 
and I am part of that world and I say, what am I to do? Come on. What is the meaning for you to do? What, what does it mean for me to do, to act? For me, the action must touch every part of my life, not just one segment of it. And that action must be complete in every thing I touch intellectually, emotionally, sexually, uh, religiously. You follow what I mean? Yes. Everything I touch must be complete in, a, in action, not fragmentary. Otherwise I shall be broken up, I shall be contradictory, miserable. And you don't think that's a question of harmony? If you say harmony, sir, <laughs> that's a difficult word. Yes. That's why I'm hesitating. That's what, what, for me, action is. Let's keep to that word for a moment till we un as we understand it. Uh, an action that will be complete in whatever I am doing. <coughs> and therefore, it must be related to everything. I can't say, well, I'll devote my whole life to uh, science. Hmm? Science. See yours. I mean, that would, I mean, that would be absurd. Oh, I must become an uh, astrophysicist. You know. So, an action that will be complete in everything I do. That for me is action in which there is no contradiction. If I have sex, it won't be contradicted to your religious life. You follow, sir? If I have money, it won't be in contradiction to something else. So it must be a life of action that will be not contradictory, not fragmentary, not creating difficulties in itself, so that it will be, it'll be a happy life. Now, <laughs> how are you? Well, the action is inevitable, that we'll do some action. Oh, but that's just, of course, we'll do some action, but that's... Once you make the action in one direction, taking for granted that you're going in a right direction, you're searching for something, and once you've made an action, doesn't it mean that you put the, the comprehension that you're capable of into that action? No, sir. No, sir. No, wait a minute, sir. You, we, are not, we are not meeting each other. Is it comprehension first and action afterwards? Or comprehension is action. Comprehension about what? Sir? The actions are in different fields. What would be the nature of such a comprehension that would act in every field? Intelligence. I mean, mean that word is a very difficult word. <laughs> I may be terribly intelligent in mathematics hmm? or in uh, getting a very good job and making the very best of it, but I might lead a shoddy little life hmm, elsewhere. You know what I mean? So if I have, if there is an intelligence, it must be operative in every way, in every act I do. You are not. Are you interested in all this? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think we haven't understood the meaning of love. No, we haven't understood the meaning of love. 
Is that what is preventing us from seeing uh, the whole an act which will be complete in everything I do? Is that what is pre- because I have no love? And what does love mean? Is love sex, pleasure, desire, jealousy, the drive for ambition, of success? Comprehension. Huh? Comprehension. Is it what? Love an abstract comprehension? As you spoke of your own life, it, it appears to me that when we want to lead this kind of life, there first has to be a, a terrible silence. No, so d- I understand that. Sir. Forget my life. I'm just telling you. This is in my life. I'm speaking now. We have to pass through a silence, for we don't know at all to, how to act. So we have to start with the, with the silence. We have to understand. And I think we are afraid of this side of this. Sir, we, look, sir, please, sir, don't, don't introduce factors which you don't know. <laughs> then you get lost. Then we get theoretical. Here, here are facts. Facts, you know, not something I can <laughs> um, theorize about. Here is a fact. Fact that I have to live in this world. Fact of sex. Fact of ambition, fact of sorrow, fear. The uncertainty. These are all facts. Right? And what am I to do with them? Because I am those facts. I'm uncertain, I want sex, I want home, I want love, I want I want to be a great man, I want to be plenty of money. You follow? I but we have energy to start with. In some way we want to do an action with it. Or without even comprehension, which when we're younger than perhaps we are now, we inevitably make an action of some direction, either pushed by our parents or society or Yes, somehow. and therefore it becomes what? Such action I'm pushed by environment. Hmm? I do something. Then it'll something be contradiction to something else. I am pushed by environment to do certain act. That action will be in contradiction to something else I want to do. Exactly, it could be. It generally is. So I live like that way. I'm pushed in this direction and I'm pulled in the, and at the end of my life I'm just shot to pieces. I'm it's a destructive way of living. Exactly. So I say to myself if I, what am I to do which will be true, which will be complete in everything I touch? I think the reason of doing is love and not idea. When you do first. Sir, that becomes a theory. I don't want to indulge in theory. Yes. I, I, don't know, I don't know what love is. Hmm? <coughs> Most of us don't know what love is. Many people have ideas. Therefore, those are mere theories. Yes. And I say we are dealing with facts and not with ideas. Yes, that's bad to deal with ideas. Because your idea is not the idea from the neighbor. And when you impose your idea to somebody, it's bad. Of course, of course, that's understood. Yes. So, I am, that is my question. What is one to do? <laughs> I repeat it again. Given all these facts, how am I to live? There must be a choice. Huh? There must be a choice of a name. There must be a choice or a purpose or a name in life. He says that. Have, watch that. There must be choice purpose, a principle in life that, that 
will be, I keep that in front of my eye. Hmm? Not really a principle, but something you want to reach at the end. Yes, a principle, and leave out a principle, a choice, right? Let's take that word choice. How am I to choose amongst all these? He said so, something, a goal you want to reach at the end. A goal you want to reach at the end. That goal may be projected by my own desire. You understand? Because I'm unhappy, torn to pieces, I don't know. And my goal is enlightenment. You follow something marvelous. That becomes an idea. And therefore I don't want to deal with ideas. Like, a, I mean, if I'm hungry and you give me a, a food in words, I say, please take your words, ideas away, I want food. On doit être intensément éveillé. Comment, madame? What is real understanding the other way? Yes, I understood, I understood, sir. Je crois qu'à propos de comprendre réellement, il y, a, il y a un très gros problème dans, dans votre forme d'expression. Parce que vous posez beaucoup de questions, et en posant des questions, vous provoquez des réponses. Or, vous savez très bien que ce n'est pas avec des mots qu'on comprend réellement. C'est ça, vous avez raison. Un dialogue de source. Oui, oui. So then what am I look sir, then what am I to do? What is communication if I don't Et ne croyez-vous pas, monsieur, que à chaque fois qu'on vous répond, on vous répond avec notre arrière-plan. Avec notre conditionnement. Chacun doit chercher en lui-même la forme résonante de ce qui s'est dit du dialogue et chercher à trouver la solution à lui-même. La compréhension de lui-même plus de soi-même. Sir, comprehension is in oneself. I can't give it to you and you can't give it to me. What we can do is to look at this. Hmm? Look at this uh, immense problem of living and find out what the tr how to live. If I may ask, what is the difficulty? Je crois qu'on confond souvent comprendre et expliquer ou s'expliquer, c'est-à-dire formuler avec des mots. So, aren't you faced with this problem apart from words? Aren't you faced with this? Yes, very much, but... I find it difficult to place the question or to place any answer because... No, no, aren't you first faced with this problem? Uh, very much. All Absolutely. right. Wait, 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 wait. You are faced with this problem, right? All of us. Now, how do you respond to it? What is your reaction to it? Natural, not forced. <laughs> not invented, not something that is convenient for this moment. What's your response when you're confronted with this thing? Do you say, well, I like that and I don't like this? I will go after that and not all this? Will you exclude all this because you want one thing? Confused because I don't know uh, the tradition which is influencing me, and I don't know where to begin. Yeah. 
I don't know where to begin because I'm caught in the tradition. Yeah. If one is caught in tradition, sir, and you are aware of it, you throw it. <laughs> you get rid of the beastly thing. But I still find it influencing me. I don't get rid of it so easily. You can't get rid of it so easily. Is that what is preventing me, you and another tradition from understanding or finding out what to do when confronted with all this? Aren't you? You see how you are answering me? You are answering in little, little bits. You say tradition, you say uncertainty, another says insecurity, I must understand, I have no love. You follow? Those are all little bits. So the little bits are prevent you from understanding, right? Yes. So you say, so you begin to say, by Joe, look what I am doing. I want to understand, look at this whole phenomenon and I am taking little bits of it. So can I not take little? I want to absorb the whole thing. I think there's a lack of real interest. I think so, sir. That's just it. I think there is a lack. I'm not criticizing, please. I'm just. <laughs> I think there is a lack of not only interest, but the urge. Lack. Of, you know, life in France or in America or in Europe generally is fairly comfortable. Fairly, I don't see very. So you say, Avanti. <laughs> Let's go, let's sell it. So let's begin then, the other way around. Discontent hmm, is necessary, isn't it? Hmm? Yes. Last May, all those students burnt up in nearly Paris. Hmm? Discontent. Are you discontented? Not discontented with the goal, with the establishment, new set of rules. Or that. Is, please listen to my question first. Discontent, not with something, but the, f but the flame of discontent. Yes. Are we, wait, sir, no, don't you so quickly answer me, please, just go little by little. You know, it's very easy to be discontented with the little room I'm living in, because I want a bigger room, I want more space. Or I'm discontented with my wife, I want a better wife. I'm discontented with my ideas. They're stupid ideas. I want some better ideas, more, more intellectual, this or that. So there is discontentment with something. That is, I don't like the environment I am living in, therefore I am discontent. That's it. That discontent is entirely different from discontent. Not with anything, but the flame of discontent. You understand what I mean? Yes. Now, which is it? Are you discontented with something or discontent? Because if you are discontent 
with something, you will soon find something and you will be satisfied. Better house, better, you will find a better house, perhaps a better wife or a better girl or something else. And you will be satisfied at the end of a year and there you are, fini. And you have destroyed the discontent, smothered it. So I am not talking of that kind of discontent. I am talking of a fire that cannot be put out by the goal, by the police, by the <laughs> you follow by nobody. So if you see that you have the other discontent, the discontent with, and that you don't don't know this discontent which is without. What is the ah, wait, quite right. approach? Ah, well, quite right, sir. He's, the question is, most of us are discontent with something. Now, how, how is a mind that is discontent with something to become discontented in itself, right? Now, look what takes place. Look at the question. Please, f very interesting, do follow that question. How am I, who I am, discontented with something? How is that discontent to change into the other? Right? Now, if I see, not verbally, intellectually, but I actually see the absurdity of discontentment with something, hmm? The other is there. I'll never be satisfied with anything. I, you understand? I wonder if I conveyed it. Because discontentment with something means I want satisfaction. Right? I want to be satisfied, I want to be gratified with, with the environment, with this, with that. my principle, my drive there is not discontent, but the search for satisfaction. Right? In the other, there is no satisfaction at any time. So, if somebody asked, what is the value and what is the point of this other discontent? If uh, one listens with great critical Critical. Yes. What, what is, is the why, point? Why should I be discontent? I'll tell you. What is the point of, of such discontent? He is asking. Right? What's the point of it? What do you think is the point of having such flame? The one is mediocrity. <laughs> right? The complete, the essence of bourgeoisism. The other is not. The other, I mean, ah, that's, with that one creates, one moves, one lives, one changes, one. You know. So, what is the difference between that discontent and restlessness? Ah. Was restlessness is fairly simple. Uh, so now, don't let's introduce something which is fairly clear. Restlessness. Most of you know, restlessness is not discontent. It has nothing to do with discontent. If I am uh, restless, I take a pill and I or gonna you know find out a way to be quiet. But that's. But we are talking, sir. Why, why are we not consumed with a flame? You know, like an artist, he paints a picture and he gets some money, he goes along, uh, thoroughly happy, sometimes dissatisfied, discontent, but he is putting out. Hmm? From that discontent, he'll soon find contentment. He becomes a very famous man, or he can't, he's not a good painter. Then becomes secondary painter, and he says, "My God, how can I ever?" Be? And so he fights a little battle with himself. 
but we are talking of a discontent that never finds a satisfaction. It's a fire that's always burning. Now, which is it we have? The little the discontent with something? We have the discontent of something and the idea of the other. Other, quite right, sir. Discontent with, with, I mean, seeking satisfaction, which we call discontent, and an idea of the other. So, by Joe, I wish I could have the other. You can't have the other. You follow? If you want satisfaction, you can't have the other. Satisfaction being uh, gratification, uh, fulfilment, the uh, becoming somebody famous permanently, you follow? All that is uh, satisfaction, gratification. And that's a very cheap stuff, you can very easily get it. So if the mind is seeking satisfaction, it cannot possibly have the other. So is that what's the matter with us? Why can't we have the other one? <coughs> Why should it prevent to have the other one? Come on. Why should Why? satisfaction, little satisfaction, prevent? Why should, it, Why should satisfaction prevent us from having that other discontent? Oh, it's fairly clear, isn't it? If my mind is always seeking satisfaction hmm, in marriage, in relationship, in job, in I don't know, all the time seeking satisfaction, how can such a mind have the other, which is no satisfaction at all? Please understand what we are talking about. What do we mean by satisfaction? Idea, and when we get something which is not too far of it, then we are satisfied. Now, what does the word satisfaction mean in itself, sir? Not the meaning of the feeling of that word to be satisfied. Satis means enough, and enough. satisfaction means making. Yeah. In other words, to make oneself fulfilled. Yeah, that's why I use the word fulfill. When we think we have done. When I say, well, I, have, I want a house first, f little house it doesn't matter, but little bigger house later. Hmm? Little money, more money. Is that... Uh, why does the mind seek satisfaction? It can go to sleep afterwards. I wonder, are you following all this or does it mean anything? Huh? Why do we want satisfaction? Yes, pleasure of some kind. The pleasure of some kind. Huh? The pain of discontentment. Now, sir, look, is there such thing as ever being satisfied? I have, I want. I want more and more and more and more, right? Not less and less and less. Is there, can the mind be ever satisfied? Is there such thing as permanent satisfaction? We realize that we're not going to get satisfaction out of what exactly we're doing, or our house, or our children or family and so on. Finally, we'll never get that satisfaction. Out. So, then what do you do? So, don't you question by saying, is there at any time complete satisfaction? 
If there isn't, why should I pursue that? <laughs> That's as far as I get. <laughs> <laughs> we don't see it in the moment of uh, creation of this content man. For instance, if we answer wrongly to a challenge, there is a pain, so there is the desire to fulfill, to change that pain into contentment. At that time, we don't see that we can never stop seeking uh, uh, fulfillment and finding satisfaction. Theoretically, when we are cool, yes, we can see it, but in the moment of action, we don't see it. So why do you separate action from... <laughs> this is a... No, sir. Find out, sir. Watch yourself. Don't you want to be satisfied? Having a good job, uh, doing something which will give you satisfaction, huh? sex, satisfaction. You know, for the mind is doing this also, to be... Huh? Why? I study at the Sorbonne, get a degree, hmm, and that will give me a job, job, and I'm satisfied. Or I say to myself, I'll retire from everything and look at my, myself and find enlightenment through myself, and at the end of it I'm awfully delighted with it. Why? I'll become a communist and, you know, all the rest. It's, it's the same thing. Why does the mind want satisfaction? It wants it and it has never questioned whether it, there is any permanent satisfaction. If there is no permanent satisfaction, then why seek it? Wait, oui, but, so, but, <laughs> uh, Repos momentané, what is it for? So no, you, you're not facing... It's very subtle and obscure. It isn't that one says, I'm going to go after this to get satisfaction. There's a certain sort of drive which is perhaps not wholly visible. And different drives of this kind make us do all the actions of life. So it's very difficult to say this is the seeking for satisfaction and that isn't. So no, sir. This, no, no. I said the mind deeply, most of us, <coughs> seeks satisfaction. Hmm? I don't say, but I, this is not self. Yes, I, yes. I, yes, I, they the demand. Which is, which they is demand. Is with the desire for satisfaction. Satisfaction. Yes. And I'm question. I mean, most of us want that. Yes, but we don't. It's not isolated. From, no, no. From I the say, contingencies of life. No, no. That's. The, all the time there is the urge to be satisfied. And there are other things too, mixed up with it. Of course, but the major... So I began with this evening by asking what is one to do, right? Faced with, faced with all this. Complexities of life. Yeah, faced with this, what am I to do? Is my action based on satisfaction? You follow now? And if it is based on satisfaction, will that satisfaction endure right through life? I find something to do in one thing, and I am satisfied with that, and is that the end of my life? Or everything is doing something, influencing, strain, stress, to break up that little satisfaction. You, yeah. I'm satisfied with my wife, right? She's nice and all the rest of it. And one warm, good morning, <coughs> she looks at somebody else. And I'm completely lost. 
jealous, you know. There it is. I have a job and somebody is going ahead of me. I am finished. I am lost. I am miserable. I am not as intellectually clever as you are and I am unhappy. So this goes on. Right? So I say, why, if there is nothing complete in satisfaction, why pursue it? Huh? What is to be possible? Yes, he focuses on you. Yeah. Yeah. It's not bad. 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 It's not Oh no, no, madam, it isn't like that, is it? I am not putting that question at all. I am saying something entirely different. Se dire satisfait, c'est toujours comparer deux états, un qui est l'un par rapport à l'autre. Eh? Je suis satisfait. Je suis satisfait. Alors, mais quoi? Ou je voulais quelque chose, je l'ai eu, je suis satisfait par rapport. But so in every action we do, like gardening, driving a car, there's a certain sort of pleasure from a job well done. Isn't this in a way satisfaction? No, sir. You go around denying no, 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 I, you see, you are any kind of action. I am not saying, sir. You are misunderstanding my my statement. Let's make it clear. Let's begin again. We said. Discontentment with something is the search for satisfaction, right? Yes. That's very clear. And I'm satisfied one day with this, and the next day I'm dissatisfied with that. I want something else. So my life is a constant battle of satisfaction and dissatisfaction, right? That's my life, one's life. Wanting and not wanting, battle. Yes. And in that state, whatever I do is and must be confusing. Of course, of course. No. One day I do something that's very satisfying. And I, and next day I see how absurd it is. What a silly ass I've been to do that. So there's a battle going on, and I say, an action based on this kind of background of battle, satisfaction and dissatisfaction, must inevitably lead to misery. Right. Must inevitably lead to confusion, and that's our life, right? And I ask myself: Is there a different way of living, acting, and not seeking satisfaction, which becomes dissatisfaction a week later? I don't know if I made. I think I made myself clear now. I know that sounds sorry. That sounds very nice, but but we do. I mean, he asked. He asked me, "What are you wanting?" I said, "Nothing," and I really mean nothing. From nothingness, one can act, and that's the greatest action. But we won't go into that. That's very. Complex thing. So, when one is young, one wants so many things, and quite rightly, you see. But how is it possible to act when you want nothing? 
I'm sorry that 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 requires a great deal of going into. Sir, what is love? Is love something? Is love my wife? Love my sex? Love my pleasure? Is love jealousy? Now when you have removed not my wife, my pleasure, my uh, satisfaction, my jealousy, then what is love? <laughs> you know. Mustn't, mustn't one be nothing to love? If you are something, can you love? Can you love if you are ambitious? If you are a big politician, can you love? Or a big financier? Or a big actor? No, sir. That's why one has to, you know, it isn't, you can't play with words. It's only when you are absolutely nothing. Love is. Hmm. I am not defining, sir. I am not defining. You can look for the definition, you can look in a dictionary. But I don't want to define it. Definition of words, of what love is, is not love. It's like describing the what kind of food you get at Tour d'Argent or in Domago and say, well, describe it and I am hungry. I, that doesn't satisfy me. Ah, no! No! Remove jealousy. Free, be, have no jealousy. No envy. No ambition. Because I see an ambitious man can never love, because he is concerned with his own, with himself. Whether he's an artist, whether he's a poet, whether he's an engineer, or the ordinary man, if he's concerned with himself first, he has n there is no love. But it's the preparation of love, you see. The negative preparation. Yes, sir. To be nothing is to love. Yes. Which doesn't mean I become a doormat that anybody can walk over me. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> to have no ideal at all, but only facts. No idea. So I won't go into all that. That's really quite, that's quite a different thing. So let's come back to what we are talking about. Yes, which, which is the movement to nothingness? Which is the movement to nothingness? I'll tell you. Which is the movement to nothingness? He's asking. Nothingness. That means no jealousy, no. There is no way to it. So this. <laughs> so let us. You have to answer my question, or we haven't gone into it. What am I to do in this life? I've got this whole life in front of me. Not, I can, I won't go into that for the moment. What am I to do in this life? So that I live and act without any contradiction. I 
otherwise I don't live at all, I live in contradictions. And that is, I live in misery. So can I live without satisfaction? Uh, and so act all the time, whether I'm choosing a shoe, pair of shoes, or going for a walk. You follow? No sense of being, wanting to be satisfied. What do you think about hate? Is it instinctive? What is hate, sir? Do you hate if you have no fear? I think I hate when I have love. Ah, no, no, wait, sir. Do you hate when there is no resistance? That's it. Never. Exactly. And when there is a resistance, there is hate. I don't. No? No. Huh? We haven't understood, sir. I resist you hmm? because you want my property or my wife. You impose your ideas against mine or you threaten my ideas. Hmm? or my belief, my position, my prestige, then I hate you. You take away something which is mine, I feel which is mine, right? My wife, my property, my this or that, I hate you then. When you hate somebody who hates you, you do the same game. Of course, of course, you play the same game. Same game. Vous dans son c'est ça, c'est ça. So, the question is, is there hate if there is no resistance, if there is no arrogance, if there is no aggression? So are there not things that one should resist? If my uh, manager wait. wants to run my... Uh, if my I manager... My books and the editor tells me what to write. If my manager, or if my wife, or if the editor, or the man who buys my picture, say, huh, right. shall I conform to what they want? Certainly not. Then you're resisting. I don't know. That's not resistance. So what does mean resistance mean? Oh, see, well, what does resistance mean? I resist anything that threatens me. Me, my wife, my property, my furniture, my belief, my God, my country, my investment in the country, right? My investment in my wife or her investment in me, anything that threatens me. Me identified with so many things. So many people have told me, so I eat meat because I don't want to resist my wife. She serves meat, so I eat it. <laughs> Isn't this...? No, no. Because my wife eats meat, I must also eat meat. Otherwise I'm resisting her if I insist on not eating meat. My wife believes in uh, what? Catholicism or communism. I don't. And must I yield to my wife? And if I don't yield, is that resisting my wife? Huh? Good God! Ah, no, sir. No, no, no. I said any for look, sir. I said anything that threatens me, 
me identified with my property, with my belief, with my God, with my job, with my wife, with my... You follow me, with all this identification, when that is threatened, I resist. I have to resist. I, um, not have to, you do. I do it. Yeah. I do it. You do it. Yes. Uh, but if there is no me identified with thousand things, I have no resistance. So I let someone take my house then? Uh, certainly not, sir. But if my wife says. My to, house, sir. Wait, wait, wait. If my so wife. Should I want your house? No, wait. And, uh, I'm threatened because I'll, I'll be out in the street. So I say, I won't resist him. I see that I'm resisting because I'm being threatened. No, sir. Therefore, I won't no, wait, resist. just I that. Wait a minute. I also need a shelter. Then I'll be thrown out. I'll be exactly in the same position as he was. So, I want to perhaps change the whole st economic, social structure of society, which will provide the man with a house and property. He's got five other houses, but he also wants mine. Ah, oh, man, I'm, I'm sorry, you go and live in their five houses. No, but he has some sort of way of taking my house. I, I, then I have to resist. I go to a lawyer, and a clever lawyer, or no clever lawyer, I find out to battle with the bird. Well, then you are, sir. You're I know. No, I just, no, sir. No, that's entirely different. I have that's a society, I'm a writer. No, sir. No, wait, don't go from one thing to the other. Stick to one thing. You, you want my house. Huh? I have one house, I have got ten houses. Hmm? I have one house, I have to live in it. If you throw me out, I will be exactly in the same position as you were when, without a house. So I say, my concern is not just to yield houses, but I want to change the social, economic, the mentality of mankind so that you, everybody will have a house. I haven't a house, fortunately. right? Hmm? So that's one thing. But if somebody says, if my wife says, I want to leave you and go with another man, I say, all right. Huh? Why should I be jealous? Why should I be angry, frightened, resist? Psychologically, that's much more <laughs> than the other. Well, sir, we better stop. Sir, one question. You spoke of a state in which you're no longer seeking satisfaction, in which there's a pain of discontent. How are we to avoid setting this up as an ideal to reach? Come on. How am I to... How are we to avoid making an ideal out of this flame that you were talking about? How am I to avoid an ideal, There's create, a... making an ideal of the flame which I'm talking about? It is not an ideal. But for us, it's not a reality. So Therefore, you say, throw it thing. out. What is important is the fact. The fact is that I am discontented with something, which is my desire for satisfaction, and I find that soon evaporates, disappears, and I want more satisfaction in something else. In that I am caught, right? That is a fact. Now then I ask myself, can that's so stupid way of living? Is there a different way of living? I question, I break through that. I don't make the other into a flame the other flame into an ideal that becomes another idea. I think we better stop, don't you? Sorry.